Before rumors would swirl that Dwayne Johnson would run for president in 2020. Did you ever consider running for president? I said, yeah, of course I would consider it. And how the surge and the groundswell <laughs> since then has really been amazing. And I got to tell you, and I'll tell you guys too, I'm, I'm so incredibly flattered. Before Dwayne Johnson would be Hollywood's top grossing actor in 2013 and be named the highest paid actor in history from 2017 to 2018, earning himself a whopping 124 million bucks. I, I do, I have this problem. I do have an issue, right? It's like a little sickness that I have where I, I really enjoy. Uh, Buying cars and giving cars to oh to people the people like my like family Oprah has it does. And, well yeah, yeah sure. in a way yeah, um, yeah the big brown ball tattooed Oprah before The Rock would take over the WWF and WWE becoming one of the greatest wrestlers if not the greatest wrestler of all time before Dwayne Johnson would have over 100 IMDb film and TV credits they will kill you they kill they kill elephants they kill pissed off bulls I didn't give a didn't yeah, matter to me I was like just bring it on. These are all real ants, I want you to know. There's not visual effects, regardless of how fake they look. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has proven to the world he's a man of many talents. After a devastating injury that would crush his dreams of being an NFL superstar, to becoming the face of the WWE and WWF, before ultimately becoming one of the biggest stars in Hollywood, The Rock, as many of you know him, had his fair share of trial and turbulations growing up. Being evicted from his house in his teenage years, which would lead to him committing theft and ending up in handcuffs on multiple occasions, Dwayne Johnson has lived quite the life and we're here to tell you guys all about it. What's going on guys? My my name is Jared Bronstein and welcome back to Before They Were Famous. This is an updated video as a lot has changed since the last time we covered The Rock. So be sure to keep sending your requests in the comments down below. Today's trivia question is, which movie was The Rock credited for doing his own stunts in? You guys gotta let me know in the comments down below. The answer will come towards the end of this video, but we gotta get on with the show. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Dwayne Douglas Johnson was born on May 2nd, 1972 in Hayward, California. The only child to Rocky Johnson, a professional wrestler, and Ada Mavia, who was the daughter of a pro wrestler and a wrestling promoter. So it's safe to say wrestling was in this man's blood. Johnson is of Canadian and Samoan descent, with his father hailing from Nova Scotia, Canada, and his mother's side coming from Samoa, although his mother was actually born in Hawaii. Growing up, Dwayne would move around, spending most of his youth watching his father fight ringside. For a brief period, he'd live with his mother's family in New Zealand, attending Richmond Road Primary School in Gray Lynn, before he'd return to the US with his parents. Upon on his return, The Rock, as many of you know him, would attend Montclair Elementary School in Charlotte, North Carolina. That is Dwayne The Rock Johnson in third grade here in Charlotte, North Carolina at Montclair Elementary School. Can you smell what Montclair is cooking? Dwayne and his family would once again relocate, this time to Hamden, Connecticut, where he would attend Shepherd Glen Elementary and Hamden Middle School. Dwayne would attend four different high schools by the age of 16, President William McKinley High in Hawaii, Glencliff and McGavick High in Nashville, Tennessee, and finally, Freedom High School in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. According to his Instagram caption, his moves were due to evictions and a little trouble with the law. While in Hawaii, Dwayne, who was 14 at the time, remember when he came home with his mom to find a padlock on the door and an eviction notice. He said, my mom starts bawling. She just started crying and breaking down. Where are we going to live? What are we going to do? A week prior, his mother's car was repossessed. Unfortunately, the incident would have Dwayne turn to robbery, joining a theft ring that would go after stores located in the very wealthy neighborhood of Hawaii, Waikiki, to help try and support his family. His criminal ways would land him in the custody of police, but it would also be the shift in the man's life. He told The Hollywood Reporter, it was about what can I control with these two hands? The only thing I could do was train and build my body. The successful men I knew were men who built their bodies. While attending Freedom High in Bethlehem, Johnson was recruited by the school's football coach while using the teacher's bathroom. A teacher comes in, his name is Jody Swick, tough guy. He says, hey, you can't be here. I kind of pause, look over my shoulder and say, okay, I'll leave when I'm done. And I continue to wash my hands. He looked at me, didn't say a word, but he was fuming, Johnson said. Johnson would go on to explain that he felt bad about his actions and decided to apologize to his then future coach. He shook my hand, I'll never forget that shake. He wouldn't let go and he said, I want you to do something for me. I want you to come out and play football for me. 
and I went out and I played football for Jody Swick. He was our head football coach and he became a father figure to me and a mentor. At 16, Johnson was already 6 foot 4, 225 pounds, and it seemed like his growth would not stop there. As he began to crush it on the football field, all aspects of his life seemed to start turning for the better. He credits Coach Swick for a lot of his success. Uh, I am here, I believe, in large part due to that man. His name is Jody Swick. He's since passed away. And thank you, buddy. Oh, I wow. appreciate it. At 18 years old, Johnson would be offered a full scholarship to the Miami University to play football for the Gators, but it would not come easy. Johnson would get offers from Penn State, UCLA, Clemson, and Florida State to name a few, but wouldn't get the offer he would eventually accept until he personally called Miami U's recruiting coordinator and sold himself. The day after he called, he would get a call from the coach and he would be given a full ride. With his eyes set on becoming an NFL star, he would go as far as even using steroids when he was 18 in hopes of it making him better, but according to him, nothing happened. Not really surprised here, the guy was already big enough. Although it seemed everything was coming up roses for Dwayne, during his freshman year he would suffer his first of many serious injuries, a dislocated shoulder that would lead to his first depression spell. He went on to say, I didn't know what it was. I don't know why I didn't want to do anything. I had never experienced anything like that. Now following the injury, Johnson would drop out of school and go to Tampa Bay to live with his parents. Sitting with a shoulder in a sling, throwing himself a pity party, it seemed like Johnson really hit rock bottom. But that all changed when he got a call from his coach saying, I quote, get your in a car and come back right now. Dwayne did just that, but would not see much playing time thereafter because a man by the name of Warren Sapp, who has since been inducted to the NFL Hall of Fame, would replace him on the team. Johnson would go on to have multiple knee injuries throughout his college career, but would still win a national championship title with the team in 1991, totaling 78 tackles and four sacks over his career. With Dunn. Number 94, Dwayne Johnson. Gets a piece. After realizing his playing time had declined, Dwayne had more of a focus on his academics and would make sure his grades were good enough to allow him to graduate from his criminology and physiology program, which he did in 1995. After not getting drafted to the NFL, Johnson wasn't ready to give up on his dream. In 95, he would sign to the CFL's Calgary Stampeders practice squad, making 250 bucks a week, but it would just be two months before he would be cut from the team. The idea that his dreams of making the NFL were now officially just a dream. Dwayne would once again head back to Tampa to live with his parents. I got seven bucks in my pocket. I literally have seven bucks in my pocket, and I got nothing. Nothing else. After going through a second depression spell, that would even cause him to break up with his future ex-wife and manager, Danny Garcia, Johnson decided he was going to follow the footsteps of his father and grandfather and become a wrestler. His father, reluctant at first, would eventually agree to train his son, and Johnson would decide on the name Rocky Mavia, in honor of both his dad and grandfather. Johnson's grandfather, Peter Mavia, was a professional wrestler and was part of the famous Anoe family, which Roman Reigns and Rikishi are also a part of. Johnson would get his WWF tryout thanks to help from a former WWF executive and wrestler, Pat Patterson. He would get his WWF contract after a short time wrestling in Jerry Lawler's USWA where he would wrestle under the names Flex Kavanaugh and Pidlow and Rock. In his 1996 WWF tryout, Johnson would defeat Brooklyn Brawler but would lose to Chris Candido and then Owen Hart. Regardless, his wrestling looks and charismatic ways were enough to get him signed. On November 17th, 1996, Johnson would make his WWF debut at their Survivor Series pay-per-view in Madison Square Garden. And again, I had this whole thing mapped out in my head that I was going to jump over the ropes, I was going to look at the hard cam, because we're always told, you look at the hard camera, the main camera, you're speaking to the world. Jump over the top ropes, I'm like, yeah, I'm here, da, 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 da. Hard cameras behind me. <laughs> now, as many of you know, this would be the start of a very long and successful wrestling career for The Rock. Now you're probably wondering how he got the name The Rock. Well over a few months of wrestling with the name Rocky Mavia and being the clean cut pretty boy, the fans got sick of him. So much so, they would even chant things like Die Rocky Die and Rocky Sucks. Johnson would eventually turn heel, as they call it in the world of wrestling entertainment, meaning he went from the good guy to the bad guy. This would happen after he'd returned from a knee injury, losing a championship fight to Owen Hart on April 28th, 1997. In August of 1997, Johnson would return, this time lashing out at the crowd booing him and referring to himself in third person as The Rock. But before his return, he would go on to marry his on and off girlfriend, Danny Garcia, who he met while playing football at Miami U. She would also go on to be The Rock's manager, which the man needed, because around this time, he had a lot going on. The Rock would go on to build quite a name for himself in the WWF, with fans eventually growing to love him and his cocky, arrogant character charismatic ways. Kind of like how I'm hoping you guys will grow to like me. We'll see. It's been less than a month. Anyway, in 1999, The Rock would have his acting debut on That 70s Show, playing his own father in the episode titled That Wrestling Show. Just over a year later, he'd act in an episode of Star Trek as an alien that pretty much still looked like him. You're no bigger than a Tarkanian field mouse. 
Thanks for insulting me by putting you in the pit to face me. These small TV roles and his wild success in the WWF would lead Johnson to host his first Saturday Night Live in 2000, a gig that The Rock himself would credit for the reasoning he started receiving Hollywood movie offers. Hi, I'm The Rock, and I'm hosting Saturday Night Live this week with musical guest ACDC. <laughs> Did you say you were ACDC? <laughs> but before The Rock would hit the big screen, he'd release his autobiography, The Rock Says, which would debut number one on the New York Times bestseller and stay at the top of the charts for weeks. In 2001, The Rock would land a role in the movie The Mummy Returns, and just two months after its release, on August 14th, 2001, Johnson and his wife Danny would welcome to the world their only child together, Simone Johnson. Like I said, Busy guy. All this would also be going down while he was still crushing it in the wrestling world. Dwayne The Rock Johnson would go on to become a legend in the wrestling world, winning the WWE Championship 8 times, the WWF Tag Team Championship 5 times, the WWF Intercontinental Championship 2 times, and many many other accomplishments that you guys can look up. Because honestly, if I tell you all of his accomplishments in the WWE and WWF, I'll be here literally all day. Bottom line, he was an incredible wrestler and a fan favorite. However, his transition to the film and TV industry wasn't so easy. There wasn't the, you know, half Samoan, half black guy who was coming from the crazy world of professional wrestling that a lot of people did not understand. They were welcoming. Then it got icy. Johnson would get his first lead role in The Scorpion King, a spin-off of The Mummy series. Although it didn't get the best reviews, it still made more than double what it cost the film to produce, so I'd say that's a success. His lead role would then lead to other films such as The Rundown, Walking Tall, a supporting role in Be Cool, and Gridiron Gang to name a few. While The Rock's Hollywood stock started to rise, he would take a step back from the wrestling world before eventually retiring, temporarily. In 2007, Johnson would split from his wife and manager, Danny Garcia, although they still remain great friends with Danny still managing Johnson's career. Johnson would go on to marry Lauren Haitian, who he met in 2006 while shooting the gameplay. The two would go on to have two daughters, born in 2015 and 2018. It seems the movie that really helped Dwayne Johnson become the Hollywood sensation he is today was Fast Five, which is the fifth installation of the Fast and the Furious franchise. This role would help Johnson star in Fast and Furious 6, as well as Pain and Gain and Snitch. In 2012, Johnson would start his production company, Seven Bucks Productions, and in 2013, Forbes would name Johnson the top grossing actor, with his films bringing in an estimated $1.3 billion worldwide. As many of you now know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson would go on to star in movies such as Baywatch, Jumanji, and get his own Fast and the Furious spin-off, starring him and the one and only Jason Statham. Of course, he'd also star in the HBO hit Ballers, and would go on to have a partnership with Under Armour, who he would release gym bags, tank tops, t-shirts, headphones, you name it, his brand is on it. I'm not lifting. I'm not sweating. I'm building. Johnson also has a YouTube channel where he's featured a ton of stars, most notably good friend and YouTube star Lily Singh. At the time of this recording, The Rock has over 4 million YouTube subscribers, just under 150 million Instagram followers, wow that's a lot, and of course, a load of money. And in regards to The Rock running for president, well we're just going to have to wait and see. As of now, I don't think there's any plans for him running in 2020. But hey, you never know. I mean, crazier things have happened. Look at our current president. We did a rich life on the rock, so be sure to check that out right after this video. This was a long video, so I gotta wrap it up with the answer to our trivia question. For our trivia question, I asked you guys which movie was Dwayne Johnson credited doing his own stunts in. As many of you guys know, his stunt double, who's actually his cousin, but could pass as a twin brother, Tano Y. Reed, does all of the rock stunts. If you look at the guy, they look almost identical, so you probably can't even tell the difference. But in the movie Snitch, which came out in 2013, The Rock was given his first and only stunt credit to date. Alright guys, I'm wrapping up this video here. My name's Jared Bronstein. If you guys haven't subscribed to our channel, be sure to do it right now, because we make epic, epic, epic videos like this one on stars, celebrities, athletes, and wrestlers, of course, before they're famous. Also, check out some of our other videos that we've handpicked for you guys to check out. You can find me on social media, at Bron7. Thank you guys so much for watching this whole video. We appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in another video.